Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back, and today I have for you a brand new round of solo gameplay. This time playing one of the most powerful and most enjoyable roles there is, the ninja on Ansel Hacker. If you are a solo player, you cannot go wrong in choosing the ninja. High mobility, hefty damage, and a limit break that can insta-kill any player who is below 50% HP, with successful kills refunding your limit break, making ninja the one and only job that can chain kills through their limit break. This is a fairly casual round, 8 kills, 1 death to 1.4 million damage, and it is not uncommon even as a solo ninja to be pushing 20 kills and over 2 million damage. If you are yet to try out the ninja in PvP, stay tuned, relax and enjoy. Thank you all for your continued support, and without further ado, let's get into it. At the start of the round, I want to be using my map to determine our first location. There is a high chance the immortals will have all three to the south, uncontested. Therefore, we want to push for both the cave and the bridge. I do not head south as from experience with zones spread just like this. The team diverts far too much attention, resulting in both enemy teams steamrolling through. Upon entering the cave, we encounter the Maelstrom, who have done a much better job moving as a single group. I like to aim a teleporting Doton in large teamfights such as this. That way, I can use the repeating heavy effect to force out my enemy's purifies. I almost always follow up Doton with Goka. The continuous tick damage is highly underrated. It can easily finish off fleeing targets, and as a player's resources get low, they are forced to retreat. Mix this with allies, especially those Dark Knights, and entire alliances can fall instantly. Us ninjas have an insane amount of survivability. I still want to be careful though. I do not spend too much time moving forwards, instead always making sure to retreat back slightly. With the Maelstrom grouped up as they are, should I get pulled in, the chances of being crowd controlled into the ground is very high, and with their scholar around, I want to avoid their mummification and tick damage if I can, who, as both teams disperse, makes a play to use both his mummification and his bio. I predicted this perfectly, blocking the negative effects with guard. Should you be hit with these before using guard, their full effect will still be in play, and with those trapped behind, my team come away with a few extra kills. The Immortals are leading, which was to be expected considering the first objective locations. Right now, we cannot do much about the Immortals outside of a few kills. We need to deal with the threat in front of us first, the Maelstrom. I dive in with my usual teleporting Doton, while following the already weak machinist off the platform, which opened up for an easy limit break. Unfortunately, the Maelstrom were well coordinated, dropping many of my allies with one assault. From my position, I am confident I can escape. Sticking close to the natural cover, I am attempting to create openings or to follow upon players out of position. I only head up to force out a black mage, who was far too comfortable above me, which in turn put me in a great spot for a big Goka Makyaku. And as my team is regrouping and gaining some ground, I take this chance to Elixir back up. Now with full resources and the advantage, we go full aggro, and stomp through those who stayed behind. This was until the Immortals came in with a sneaky flank, at which point I drop way back, to avoid being pinched and to kill those caught out. A short-lived push, as the Immortals cleverly push both teams back, in order to freely capture more zones. It is clear now I need to make some bolder plays. We need to fight the Immortals, regardless of the Maelstrom's obsession with us in third place.
This is where I pushed south with my own flank, opening up with my teleporting Doton on the bridge, which turned into the very reason we all play Ninja. A juicy limit break multi-kill combo, jumping myself into a battle high free. We gained some decent scoring, while at the same time reducing the immortal score, which essentially cancels out the zones they just captured. Following this, the Maelstrom have finally begun to engage the Immortals. I would like the push to have continued. However, my team decided to head north, cut through middle and then head south, rather than pinch the Immortals from the side during the same push. So I loop round to meet them, as I do not want to be caught out in their spawn. Remember, we just killed a great deal of Immortals, meaning most will be respawning. With respawn comes a brief period of immortality, which I do not want to be sticking around for. My team's decision to flank this way means we must engage with the Maelstrom. In the typical fashion of third place, fight second place or game strategy. We give chase for a while, until my team made the smart decision to back off, heading to mid for the first S rank spawn. I do get cut off, but whatever, I am a ninja. I can retreat with ease past the Immortals and regroup. Once I regroup, I drop Doton on the Maelstrom's ramp. I place it there in hope the heavy effect can slow down their advance, while those who remain on my team can engage with the Immortals. In doing so, I also got a Machinist to waste their Limit Break, which is always a win. After a top up with my Elixir, I head straight back up. The Maelstrom and the Immortals are fighting it out, so my aim here is to essentially team, waiting for the Maelstrom to make their move, then following up with a huge Goku Makyaku. Sadly, I am unable to get more aggressive, as my team were mostly watching from our ramp, within the safety of a Sage's Limit Break. Not ideal, however the Immortals were stalled once again, and we had begun to catch up. It becomes clear around this time, many of my efforts are going to waste. My allies are far too hesitant to completely head up top. Both the Maelstrom and the Immortals see this to take full advantage. I drop early to fully heal up as I am expecting some big combos to head our way. The extra health and MP could be the difference between life and death. However, the Maelstrom halted their advance, allowing my team to finally gain some footing. So now I try a different approach. I bait myself in close and open with some AoE and tick damage. I then instantly go into my guard, a risky play I like to do from time to time. I do so in order to bait out as much crowd control as possible. My team has only just moved in, and with less CC around, they might be able to turn this fight. After dropping to loop back around, I get too overconfident with my own Doton, as this time the Immortals were much more ready for me. I still went for this bold play, however, as an A-Rank had just opened up behind us, and judging from my team, I knew they would give up mid and all retreat. Thankfully, after respawning, I still have a Battle High 2 to work with, and the Maelstrom made sure to not freely give up the center S rank, in which a similar fight unfolds. I use my usual tactics, and I mistime my own limit break, but the follow-up was still more than enough to force out the Immortals. After some more back and forth, the Maelstrom also began to slowly fall back, resulting in my own team finally capturing the S rank.
During this time, the Immortals had flanked, capturing all the new zones to the south. I saw this while engaging. However, I do not leave as much of my team are still hanging around. Going in solo against the Immortals would have been feeding. Only once my team noticed the Immortals flank and retreat do I do the same, using the rock to my advantage to slip past. Then with my team respawning and regrouping, we were able to turn some attention to the Immortals. This was until the Maelstrom's Greed took over, rushing in and pushing us back to our spawn, at which point we are forced into this senseless battle of once again third place fighting second place. This allowed for the Immortals to go around freely capturing objectives and to stomp through a weakened Maelstrom team split. Regardless of many questionable decisions, this was still a fun round, and playing casually still resulted in 8 kills to 1.4 million damage. When you get a team like the Immortal Flames, you can expect to easily double the score, so get out there and try the ninja for yourself. Happy hunting, and I shall see you all in the next one.